Hola. Bonjour. Whatever way you guys want to say it's welcome to the normal, not normal podcast with myself, Oliver Phelps. And me, James Phelps. Guys, thank you very much for joining us this week. We hope you're doing well and we hope that the new year is proving to be a very good one. So this week is a listener episode and by that it means that we're going to read and answer and help you guys join in with the episode. So today we have some of your story times uh, and some questions and also did you know? As everyone knows, we're at this time of year when everyone's thinking about their health and all that kind of thing. New year, your new start and all that kind of stuff. Um, new so year, new me. One thing which I think cannot be overemphasized, if your new thing is to get healthy and you join a gym and all that stuff, that's great. But please, please, please do not be uh, worried or embarrassed about asking someone how to use a piece of equipment or a certain type of exercise. So there was a guy yesterday who had he hadn't been in a gym for quite a while and he pulled his back out trying to do an exercise because he just didn't ask anyone so my bit of advice to anybody is if you're ever curious about anything like that go and ask a trainer go and ask anyone else that's doing an exercise and everybody should be i use the phrase should should be very encouraging to show you what they're doing and how that exercise works for you yeah, I noticed something the other day actually. So I was out in a, I went to a, a public gym because I was staying in a hotel. So I went to the gym in the hotel. And because I've got a cabin at the end of my garden where I've got like weights and some other gym equipment like that, um, I've realised that suddenly when I'm surrounded by different people, I've become a bit of a grunter. Oh, no, you're not. But weird, those people weird, now. weird. A guy. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. It just suddenly came out. We had a guy at our old gym who we used to call the screamer and everybody knew when the scream was there because if he's doing like his eighth push-up, everyone would know that it's his eighth push-up. Two things, Oliver. One, yes. never be a screamer in the gym. Two, no. never take advice for someone who has the pencil leg. They never train leg day. It's all about the upper body. They're the, don't take who advice looks, from those people. Who looks at leg day? I know you skip it. That's why. I, don't, I, do, I do it. I do it every now and then. You lift the calf raises and then wear three quarter shorts. Who cares? <laughs> you got Very these up. anyway. Uh, moving on, moving on. Uh, so, I was here's another here's another example though about as you say like new people taking up new ideas and new things. So I have recently under the uh, recommendation it came recommendation of a thing called a shakti mat, and. It is. I've been telling James about it, and it is. So this this thing is basically a, a small padded gym mat with hundreds of spikes on it. They're like almost like rivets you get on the bottom of a golf shoe, but up facing. And the idea is behind it is supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to help relax you, relax the muscle group, um, almost like tiny. I suppose the same type of way that acupuncture works. Uh, you're supposed to lie on it for about anywhere between twenty five minutes to half an hour. And uh, yeah, just just go out. And this thing is hell. Um, I found it a bit more bearable with a very very light shirt on. But yeah, the first time I did it was just on like literally like a bare back, and it is vile. But what I would say with a light shirt on, I've been sleeping like a rock after half an hour on this thing. So if anyone feels like either a having a laugh at their their significant other and get them a little gift like that maybe try it or if you're just having a bit of trouble sleeping i would say it's worth a go but it probably isn't for everybody i would say it's definitely not for everybody that's that and one thing actually oliver maybe we should quickly talk about because i know it's it's been in the 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 public domain Ooh. the reunion which we shot and was released uh, earlier this year I can say that now because we're early this year. Um, it was a lot of fun. So just a little behind the scenes gossip. It was great going back to film at Leaveston for the first time in 10 years. Leaveston where we filmed all the movies. It was great hanging out with everybody. And it was a lot of fun. And what was quite cool, even though no, no, nobody else got to see it, is that after filming was all done, a lot of us went for a meal and we had a great catch up. And it was like old times. It was really, really good fun. Great to see everybody. And just to keep everybody happy and it's true we're all still good mates we're all still good friends and i'm looking forward to the 30th year anniversary <laughs> yeah i mean i've got as you say at the it was really cool actually being able to all go to a um to this room in the hotel where a lot of us were staying and literally over the course of like three four hours 
glass of wine for a couple of us, like a nice meal. And it was just nice just being able to just chat and just literally talk about stuff from way back when, when we were filming. Obviously there's bits of filling in blanks from between when we finished filming and now, but it was just great catching up on stories that are very unique to the to certain members of the cast, which is absolutely fantastic. And it was really cool just filming, being back at the studios where we filmed all the movies and those who have been there for the studio tour will have seen it is very fancy nowadays. So it looks slightly different, but the heart is the same. And even though on some parts we weren't on camera with other people, we had a great hangout and especially in the evening. So there was, who was there? There was a few, quite a few, there's like eight of us went for a meal in the hotel where we were staying and we literally just sat around the table. We didn't eat that much food because we just kept talking. It was one of those where the, the guys serving were kind of like, <clears throat> Here's your main, and we still haven't touched our starters yet because everyone was just so engrossed with hanging out, catching up. And I don't know about you, Oliver, but it still felt like we were all in our early 20s and not now in our 30s. Yeah, it, it really did. It definitely felt like we were the still the youngsters around. Um, but as you say, but the meal itself, what we, we had afterwards, which was it was in this, this, this private dining room at the hotel by the studios where we were staying. And it was great because it was fun. A lot of the stuff that we spoke about was stuff what was only only people in that room would know about, and without and we're not telling we're not telling anyone uh, <laughs> because there's certain things that remain within within four walls, and a lot of the anecdotes and a lot of the stuff we were talking about there definitely made us chuckle. Um, but it was it was just a nice a nice way to finish off um, a get together with everybody. Like we we'd done as James said, we we were filming stuff in the day at the studios um, and it was just it was just fun because I mean when we were filming it we had no idea what it was going to look like when they, they cut it all together and stuff but just being able to film back in the Great Hall um, was really fun it was funny filming in the burrows again however because it's now on the studio tour it was funny sitting at the Weasley's breakfast table but seeing a sign you know scan this QR code to get your snapchat filter it's quite funny like seeing that type of stuff from it because we just see it a lot of us anyway see it as a set whereas other people obviously see it as this great amazing thing which of course it is but yeah it's just nice being able to film on that again and 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 get into the uh, the spirit of things and just get back into it and as you say James it was like being back so many years ago it was something which I didn't I got a bit surprised by how I felt when we we're filming in the great hall we we're only filming in there for a little bit but I, I can remember looking around thinking, I never thought I would be back in here filming. Like, ever. No. The last no. scene I filmed in there was, um, <clears throat> well, the last scene that Fred had. And I never thought that I'd be back in there, at least to, to film anything. And so that was quite a, a surreal moment, but it was really nice. It was it was cool then looking around and you see, you know, Dan over there, Tom over there, Bonnie's, Bonnie and Mark are next to us. You've got Alfie and Ivana over there, Matt Lewis over there. Yeah. Uh, Felton's running around doing something. He he sneaks a little camera in, old Tom. So there's like an old film thing. Anyway, bit of a camera geek. He's a camera geek, like I'm a uh, a, a space nerd. Do you like what, do you like my little adapter as well? By the way, for my uh, what does that do? Christmas present. Uh, it makes me able to be able to, to take photos of nebulas easier. Right. Terrific. Anyway, we had a great Terrific. time filming the reunion. It was really good fun. We really hope everyone enjoyed that. And I reckon we're going to have an unofficial reunion again because like I say that that meal was just such fun to have and catch up. So I don't know a few of us have spoken since about it. So um, I'd say watch this space, but we probably won't tell anyone. So. No, no. I think that's, <laughs> as, as I was saying earlier, it's as nice as it is doing stuff for cameras and for, and for recording and stuff like that. I think sometimes there's something to be said in a big, when it's certainly a big collective of us, like they were like eight of us that night and just, just chewing the fat um as you would imagine and the best way i describe that is with a lot of people is if you ever have like a, a school reunion or a school catch-up with some friends or a university catch-up with some mates i don't mean like the whole school but i mean like you know just your core your core group that was pretty much it the only difference is that we're talking about stuff what a lot of the world's population have seen 
um, and has got some reference to and some some relationship behind. So let's just talk about. And we were talking about all stuff like members of the crew, locations we filmed on. Um, yeah, it was it was very funny. And uh, even if we were filming it, I mean, it was quite funny. Gary Oldman popped his head around the corner at one point as well, didn't he? To say hello to everybody. So just a normal, really a normal nice day. <laughs> yeah, really, really nice to see him. Um, so yeah, it was just it was just great to be able to do that. But uh, anyway, we thought we'd address it. But moving on, let's bring you guys into this episode because today, like I said, is another listener participation episode. So James, have you got a story time for us first? I do. So the first one is from Dana from the Isle of Wight. Now, for those who don't know, the Isle of Wight is a island right off the coast of the south coast of the UK. Um, I have great memories of the Isle of Wight because I used to go to the festival there every year. In fact, my stag dude was on the Isle of Wight festival. Really fun place. And you can even get to it by a hovercraft. There you go. There's a first random fact. Anyway, Dana, she writes in and says, So I have a lot of not normal stories that really make me question many things. But I thought I would tell you the most recent one. Back in June, I met a guy on Tinder. It was the first time I'd used the dating app. Sure, Dana. And it was purely because my best friend convinced me that it would be character building. <laughs> we spoke for a little while and then he asked me on a date. And I used, as I live on the Isle of Wight and he lives in Portsmouth, which is on the mainland, he said he wanted to come here to the island for the date. We planned to go on a nice walk and have some food and some nice drink. He said he'd never used a boat to come to the island before, so I booked and paid for it and gave him clear instructions that he had to be there 15 minutes before sailing. Oh, so I'm taking he, he took the boat instead of the hovercraft. Everything went wrong straight away. First, the window on my bus to the pier broke and it was raining, so my hair looked pretty terrible. After that, my earring broke, which seemed like another bad omen. His boat was supposed to leave at 12.47, so I messaged him at 12.45 and asked if he was on the boat, and he said, I'm just leaving my house. <clears throat> and I was understanding, but frustrated, because it meant that I'd be at the pier super early, and I'd have to wait there for over an hour. When he eventually arrived, he apologised, and everything seemed fine, and then it started raining again. The heaviest rain I've seen in about three years. He seemed really surprised after he told me he didn't think it rained in tropical places. <laughs> and it what? was like, th th this is still England. Like, you can see it from the coast. Like, it's not a far away. It's not that far away. <laughs> when we got to the pub, oh, he said he had no money, so he couldn't order me a drink, even though he had just ordered himself one. This is a couple of red flags here, Dana. Yeah. I tried to be accommodating and said, we can just order it on my phone. And then he ordered five alcoholic drinks and just kept talking about how aggressive his friends are. I'm not surprised if he's not buying any drinks. His mm. boat back was supposed to be at 8.30 p.m. But at 4.30, he said, right, do you want to walk and wait for the boat? I was like, yeah, sure. On our way, he turned to me and said, I do actually like you, but you're a bit tall. And then he proceeded to say that he thought I misled him by not telling him my height on Tinder. I'm not even that tall. I'm five foot seven and he's five foot nine. I asked him, why is it an issue? And he said, it's not, but I thought you were five foot three. And I asked him why he thought that. And he said, because you have a young face. We got to the boat terminal. He went to kiss me. I was very reluctant about considering how weird it had been and how he'd made it seem like I committed a crime by not saying my height. Needless to say, we didn't go on a second date. I think the key thing to take from this is listen to your gut. Oh my gosh! Well, I think Can you that invoice is... him. I, you should definitely yeah. invoice him for a couple of those drinks. Who goes on what a date? Like money? Also, as well, well Dana, I've got to be honest. If he's saying that he's worried about your height, if you if he thought you were height, and he's claiming to be five foot nine, guarantee that man suddenly is suffering with a lot of small man syndrome. Wouldn't want, he wouldn't want you wearing heels ever again, let's put it that way. Not to mention the fact that he'd be one of these people who'd be like, oh, I haven't got my wallet yet again. Yeah, as you, as you said, five alcoholic drinks. What is that all about? I bet you didn't enough of your cone of chips on the way home as well. Probably not. Awkward dates are funny to look back on though, aren't they? To look back oh, on. yeah. Yeah, some are terrible. I remember going on a date once and uh, all the trains were cancelled home. It was a first date with this girl and uh, her mum came and picked us up to go home. Terrible, terrible yeah. idea. Mm, not good, not good. I once had one where the date was okay, but there was no spark, shall we say. 
it was um there was a few awkward silences and that kind of stuff so you're kind of thinking right well this will end but i'm i'm terrible at leaving for like saying goodbye so i literally ended it with this was fun oh we'll have to do it again yes okay yeah so another i, I did i did follow through with another date and then um after that one i made sure i was going to leave before saying we should do this again it was like thumbs up mm. <laughs> shake the hand goodbye mm. Hey, anyway, Oliver, carry on with me. No, I was going to say something else, but never mind, never mind. Uh, right, so coming up, the next story is from Mia from Serbia, who says, my mother has a video of me, age five or six, when I want to put my younger sister to sleep. I'm singing her a lullaby, and then I gently put a pillow over her face. Don't worry, my mum stopped it very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Mum, for being attentive and realising the danger in the situation. But also, I've got to say, Mia, you sound like it was coming from a very good place and maybe not trying to suffocate your sister, but actually just, you know, gently get her to sleep. You'd like to think anyway. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? So the next story is from Yimin. And Yimin says, here's my not normal story. Two years ago, I was studying in South Australia and my friends and I went to Cleland Wildlife Park. As you know, Australia is famous for the adorable kangaroos. The wildlife park gave us a big bag of food to feed the animals. But by the time we got to the kangaroos, we found that, they'd ne- that we'd nearly run out of all the food because we'd given it to other animals. One kangaroo approached us and put his head straight in the food bag. But when he realised the food was gone, he punched me on my chest sending me reeling backwards luckily i wasn't badly hurt but the zookeeper told us he was probably in a bad mood i bet he was (laughs) i think we've just found the australian equivalent of dana's boyfriend from that date just an angry kangaroo yeah expecting something for nothing i i can only assume you mean that all the other kangaroo, that all the other animals had had all the other food from people, and he was probably thinking, right, sooner or later, someone's going to bring me some food. Do you think? Do you think it wasn't the first time that that had happened that day? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I reckon he was hangry. A hangry yeah. kangaroo is not angry one to kangaroo. be messed with. Gosh, gosh, no, definitely, <laughs> definitely not. So anyway, moving on to some questions coming now, and the first one is a bit of a serious one. Uh, so, and this one comes from Caro, who says. Feeling insecure is a big part of my life and I really want to overcome this. My question for you is, have you ever felt insecure and how do you deal with it? Well, Caro, I've got to be honest with you, yes. I think everybody feels that at some point, if not daily, but fairly fairly often anyway. Um, but how do you deal with it? You kind of just, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of sometimes think with the, I um, heard a saying once from somebody who said, step up or step aside. So you just got to crack on and do it. What's the worst that's going to happen? I think everyone is insecure. In, in, everyone has been, or everyone is, in some way, shape, or form, insecure. So they're they're always nervous about something. And it may be something which no one else has any ever recollection to. So for me myself, I'm always insecure about my skinny wrists. See, skinny wrists. But mm. no, I bet no one's ever noticed that. And if they had, shush. <laughs> But it's just something, and uh, but then everyone else has their own insecurities. But that's what makes the human race the human race. Now I'm no trained uh, doctor or anything like this, um, but I just think that it's good to always believe in yourself. And and it, I know everyone says that, but you should you should always back yourself and just trust that you can do it and just apply yourself. And those little insecurities will always be way outweighed by your securities. Is that a good way of putting it? Yes. And also, and, well, no, but it's true. But also remember, like, the most successful people of all time in history, going back millennia, they will have all had insecurities in some way, shape or form. And yet they're all well known to this day. So just keep on being yourself. Keep on being the person that you know you are and that your friends and family love you for. And I would say just just keep being you. There is that as well, and then the other I think the other side of it as well is that, you know, sometimes you get people get in touch and say, I don't know, there's an exam coming up, for example, and I'm really worried about this exam, and that's that's fair enough, but at the same time, 
you, if you're doing an exam, you've already been taught what it is you're going to know. So if it just means taking some time and recapping everything as well. And just remember, at the end of the day, it's just a bit of paper or some words on a screen. It's how they're going to jump out at you and do anything. So make sure you, you do your best with it and just crack on. And then if you find yourself in a position or a job or something like that where you're not terribly sure if you've got all the answers or anything like that, I won't tell anyone if you won't. Just crack on until you work out what you're doing. I mean, unless you're like a neuroscientist or something like that, maybe take a step back. But, you know, on the whole grand, general grand scheme of things, just keep doing your best that you can possibly do. I think also, could I say, I know that we always talk about people's masks and you shouldn't rely on that. But I was speaking to a friend of mine the other week who's a, a really successful PR guy. Um, and one of the things that he was he always tells people is if you're doing a presentation or or if you're meeting a lot of people smile even if you're not feeling great smile and eventually it will work it will feed into you for even if it's that short moment that you're with people and then eventually and I, I can attest to this this definitely does work for me I always find something funny even if I'm having a pretty rubbish day if something's funny I will exaggerate to myself how funny that is and it definitely work that was that's what works for me so the next question is from Melanie in Sao Paulo and she says my name is Melanie and I'm from Sao Paulo Brazil and I love your podcast it's my escapism from my problems in real life but I do have a question for you do you have any stunt doubles in Harry Potter and if you did which scenes were they great question so we had a couple for certain different scenes, but the, the main stunts scenes that you remember. So a lot of stunt guys are there for not just for being thrown, you know, explosions or things like that, but literally just showing you how to move safely around a set and all that kind of stuff. But our main predominant one that always stays in my head is in the fourth film, The Goblet of Fire, when Fred and George put their name in The Goblet of Fire, there's a scene when they get thrown back. And we rehearsed that in real life where we got flung up on a, a jerk rig, so they literally like, put a um, harness on us and throw us backwards. And we land, we, we practiced landing and all that stuff. But they decided that they were going to have the have Fred and George land on the floor. And did you know, it's the only time the floor in the Great Hall has been changed. So it oh went from God. being the hard stone in that area to a softer stone. It, I say it, it was like a crash mat, but a crash mat that you have in, in school. So it's actually probably harder than concrete in real life. Anyway... Yeah. They switched it to this and we had Gordon and we had Bradley. And first of all, it was weird because they looked more like us than we looked like us. So I remember watching it, but having a bit of an out of body experience. And Bradley, was he playing you? Was I he doing your one or my one? I can't remember. So Bradley got, well, they both went up and then ended up falling backwards. And they did this two or three times and it looked a bit, oof, but they, you know, they landed okay. And then they said, we'll do it again. Went up and did it again. And Bradley actually dislocated his shoulder, his elbow when he landed. And it was very, oh, wow. And so that was the closest we came to an injury. But he still, but like the pro, he still managed to finish the scene. And when they yelled cut, that's when he was a bit, ow. Mm. So, yes, mm. that would be the main stunt guy, stunts that we had that I remember specifically. Um but was, a lot of the other stunt guys as well was when, if there's ever any dueling or anything like that, they'll be the guy showing you how to move, um, getting out the way of things. So a stunt man does a lot more than just throw himself down some stairs. Although I, I really, it's a shame that they didn't put it in the final cut, but we would we have the Quidditch World Cup scene when we're trying to get out or whatever and all the Death Eaters rock up. Um, and there's all and it's all fire kicking up and stuff like that. Do you remember I, they got me to push someone through a table? Yeah. Like there was there was one of the guys just hovering around there and they said, Right, just throw him. So like I threw him and he went crashing through this table and it looked really cool. But he never made the I guess they didn't think that was quite in George Weasley's character to go all I think Undertaker was, on someone. I so I think it was adding the uh, the wrestling commentary at the end of it probably didn't help. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, moving on. The next question that comes from Anastasia from Russia, who says, what was or is the craziest gift or compliment you have ever received? Well, Anastasia, I've, I had one happen to me recently, actually, where I did, a, uh, I did a cameo video for someone way over a year ago now. And then I got a message um, a couple of weeks ago from the person who requested, just saying, 
just thought I'd let you know. The birthday message went down very, very well. And I don't know if it's coincidence or not, um, but the girl whose birthday it was has recently just named her son Oliver, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, there we go. As compliments go, spot on. What about James? Top that, James. Um, I heard somebody was about to found a country and they wanted to call it James, but they went with another name. Pardon? I'm just trying to top being named after somebody. That's, I can only think a country would be a better, or a city maybe. Definitely to this day, one of the most bizarre gifts we were ever given was a bra filled with potatoes. No reason given. Yeah, that was just that was just odd though, isn't it? Really you know odd. I think about and that also, now with a, an older head on. Yeah. But again, if you sent this, why? please message and say why. Because it has been baffling us for about 20 years now. Thank you very much for those questions and those stories. But now we go on to one of my favourite parts of the show. The Did You Knows. As we all know, I'm a bit of a Did You Know fan, a Did You Know geek. So, this one comes to us from Faye. So, she says, Hi, fellow Earthlings. I'm Faye from the Philippines. And I want to share something I've recent, I read recently. According to the book The Happiness Project, a small child typically laughs more than 400 times each day. And an adult... Only 17 times. So, did you hit that number today? And if not, I hope you find more reasons to laugh and to be happy. <laughs> what a great, great, did you know? 400 times a day laughing. Yeah, a kid, like a baby. But then an adult will only, on average, last 17 times a day. Maybe. Maybe that's right. What a great, I love that. Thank you so much for that one, Faye. Yeah, I've I've uh, I have hit that. I've got to be honest with you. Um, today I had a really good chuckle earlier. A couple of things really. Uh, the one right. Have you ever been to the tip and see someone who's there with their their other half and they're just having a blazing row about who's carrying what side of the bag? So the tip is like the the rubbish dump, and uh, yeah, they were taking this garden waste in, and uh, they were they'd obviously been married a while, I assume, by looking at them. And uh, yeah, oh, it wasn't going well at all because after they'd emptied the, the bags in, like the bag of green stuff in, the wife ended up throwing these green bags onto the bag pile in the other one. And the husband went absolutely wild. Thankfully, I was wearing a mask so I could just grin from ear to ear thinking, ha ha ha. And off I went. I do have a did you know fact from Ida, who's writing all the way in from Sweden. And Ida says, did you know that there are more Lego minifigures than there are people on Earth? We do now. There you are. We do now. And we've got our own ones. Thank you so much for sending that in, Ida. We do. I've got that, that upstairs, easy one of, as well. Huh? That was easy. One of the best joys of being in Potter was having our own mini fi Lego figures. Loved it. And little yes. Lego for Christmas. And they're the Always new ones, aren't they? Thing. So they've got like two on their face. And they've got they've yes. two on either side of their heads. Well, that actually brings up a very good fact for my Did You Know Oliver. And we hadn't even rehearsed this, but this is good. So, did you know? There was a Roman god called Janus, right? Who had two faces. So you could look forward and look backwards. It was the Roman god of doors and gates. And this is why the month of January is called January, after Janus. After looking forward, but also remembering what happened behind. That's why the first month of the year is called Jan January, after Janus. Which then goes into my second did you know fact about January. Who'd have known? Who'd have known? Who'd have known? January and February were put on the calendar after all the other months. And this is because in the original Roman calendar, winter did not have months. Although March was originally the first month, January became the new first month because it was when people chose the new consulate or Roman leaders. And this is why this month has 31 days. Well, well and then they just screw the calendar up and say, what about February? Oh, just 28. Well, no, Febu February was the, I think it was the last one and they needed to add an extra. That's why there's a leap year because it's not always 365 yes, days around. It. See, there we are. No, no, no. Very good. So, Can I just go back to Janus, right? Janus. Yeah. I've never heard of a god of a gate and a door. It's a bit different to like, you know, the other gods that they were. 
probably but running out of them of, by that time, aren't they? Yeah, I know. But you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, that's the god of love. That's the god of war. That's the god of pride. All this, that, and the other, you know, of, of harvest and stuff. What are you, Janus? Doors and gates. Well, did you know as well that he presided over the beginning and the end of a conflict? Hence, war and peace, right? That's where the two come from. Who Janus did? Janus, yeah. So the door to his temple, the doors were open at the time of war and closed to mark peace. Okay. As the gods transitioned, he was remembered at births and journeys. And he was also added to traveling, trading and shipping. Very unusual of the mythology that is ancient Greek had no versions of Janus, only the Romans. All oh, right. There you go. I there suppose go. there wasn't really too much call for doors, was there, in ancient ancient uh, Greece? Well, of course there would be. How would you play knock knock? Well, when did the door when did the door become a thing? Like a hinge? Do you know what I mean? Well, this is a question for another day. This is down guys... answers answers to the normal address of normal not normal podcast at gmail dot com. And if you don't necessarily know where the door came from, feel free to also send in your did you knows or any other anecdotes of stories that you think everyone else would love to hear. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for all your participation this week and for this season. We're having such a great time making these shows, and thank you so much for the just you guys getting involved as well so like oliver said please continue to send your stories your videos your sound clips to normal not normal podcast at gmail.com and we'll make sure to get as many on the show as possible including bad dates yes like dana on the isle of Wight. hopefully not trying to kill your sibling that would be that would be a good one and i think maybe I think that's that's always a good one to get over with, really. Maybe not having anything to do with that. Um, yes, me. Yeah, or even or even getting getting started on and attacked by a kangaroo. But all stories are welcome at whatever side of the spectrum they are, guys. At the end of the day, you guys make this um, such a great thing for us to be able to do, and we're so happy to be able to share in this time we have together once a week together and enjoying it all. So, guys, between now and then, if you haven't already, please feel free. Feel free to subscribe, like, tell your mates, leave a good comment, whatever it is like that, as long as it's as long as it's good stuff. Um, feel free to do so. But in the meantime, I have been Oliver Phelps. I've been James Phelps, guys. Thank you again so much for listening. We do hope you're having a great start to the year. Remember, if you've got any resolutions or anything like that, keep them up. You can do this, whatever they may be. And we'll see you next week with a little interview with one of our guests. Take care, guys. Have a good week. Bye-bye.